Rhonda with Root Design Company, and I'm Rosita, and today we want to share with you our favorite dahlias for wedding design work. We learned early on that not all dahlias look good in bouquets, um, and so I think it's important to know what you want out of your dahlias before you plan your list. We tend to use different dahlias in our market benches than we do for wedding work. So if you stick around until the end of the video, I'll share with you our favorite colors. We kind of grow three or four color palettes, and particularly the blush and burgundy one, we've kind of been honing over the years. When we plan our dahlia list for the year, we look for two different things. We look for dahlias with different sizes and with different shapes. Our favorite shape to work with, whether it's wedding bouquets or market bunches, is the ball shape. Right. And, right. and the reason for that is because it doesn't overwhelm a bouquet and it looks good no matter how you stick it in the bouquet. Now, if you're doing a dinner plate dahlia, those always have to go kind of in the front, kind of on the bottom, and it, it can get really awkward in a bouquet. Some examples of ball dahlias that we like would be the... Um, Jowie Winnie. Jowie Winnie is a big one. Uh, we like Lancress. That would be a ball type, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Kimono Zoe. Kimono Zoe, Cornell, Cornell Bronze. Another shape that we like to work with is formal decorative. I think that's what it's called anyhow. Um, it's kind of a half ball shape. And an example of that would be... Sweet Natalie. Sweet Natalie, that's my all-time fave. Blizzard. Um, Blizzard, it's a good white one. Uh, what are some other shapes of dahlias? Well, you have your dinner plate. Dinner plate, which would be Cafe LA, Floral. Um, we grow the Sierra Glow, all giant dahlias that can quickly overwhelm a hand bouquet. But those are really good for like urn arrangements, big installations. Um, they're kind of a statement flower that help you to make a statement with your bouquet. Another one we worked with a lot last year was a semi-cactus shape, and our favorite in that, actually probably the only one we've ever really grown, <laughs> yeah. is terracotta. Thanks, Maggie. Yeah, shout out to Maggie. <laughs> she gave us some tubers and ended up being, I think, my favorite dahlia last year. They were so prolific. My all-time favorite dahlia would be Sweet Natalie, and I was inspired to buy this after I saw an Instagram story I think somebody had and it's just, it's, to me, it's the perfect dahlia. Now, it is a little bit hard to work with in bouquets because it, it's not a ball dahlia. It's the decorative, that what we call them. But the colors on it, the shape of the petals, the, it just everything about it to me is, is perfect. The dahlia I was most disappointed in was Wizard of Oz, and we nicknamed it Wizard of Not. <laughs> we were so bitter about it. It's such a bright candy pink. It was hard to use in anything. It didn't really, it didn't really look good with anything. So I think often the criteria that we use for dahlias is how they pair well with others, how they play off of other dahlias, and if they don't play nicely with others, we don't grow them. I think my favorite is probably Landcress. Um, it's a white ball dahlia and super prolific, and it goes with so many different palettes. It's a nice clean white, and just, it gets nice and tall, so it's long, strong stems. Mm -hmm. It's all around a good producer, and definitely worth the money. My least favorite that we tried last year is Creme de Cassis. <laughs> I was so on the fence when we got this, but we both kind of, we've, we've decided over the years that we each can kind of pick some stuff that we ourselves like, even if the other person doesn't. I gave up, we're not growing it this year. <laughs> it's and okay, it, I didn't like it either. I think the pictures I saw were a lot prettier than what it was in person. And it, it's a very flat dahlia, so it was a little hard to use in bouquets, and I didn't just love the color. One thing that was hard was because it had such a contrast of colors in the mm -hmm. dahlia. It was really dark centered and then really kind of pale on the outside. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't look good in bouquets. I mean, that's the bottom line. And if it doesn't work, there's no sense growing it. No, too much hard work. Okay, now I want to share with you our favorite dahlias in the blush and burgundy palette. Our favorite blush dahlias would be Cafe LA. Uh, we like Sweet Natalie, Kamano Zoe. Those are different sizes and shapes within the same color, which I think is important for good floral design. Our favorite burgundy dahlias would be uh, Downham Royal, which is a, it goes a little more towards purple. I like Ivanetti, which is a little more towards the red end of it, but it's really dark. And then also, it's not necessarily burgundy, but we like to put Jowie Winnie in this one too. It's kind of a bridge color between blush and burgundy, and it just kind of holds everything together. And then also, when, it, when we have a blush and burgundy palette, I like to grow some white dahlias to go with it. Our three favorite whites to use in different shapes and sizes are Florel, which is the dinner plate, 
and then Blizzard, formal decorative, and Lancress, which is a ball shape. And this year we're also gonna grow Small World. Um, I had seen that one popping up in floral design kind of all over, and I, it took a lot of little digging to finally find which one it was. From what I can see, it has a little bit of a blush center, but you really don't see that when it's mature, I think. So that's a little ball shaped dahlia. It's smaller than some of the others, and I think it will look really pretty sort of as a, a floating flower in your bouquet. And then we also grow a peachy palette, and we never know what to call this because these can go a bunch of different ways. You, um, the first one we ever grew was Crichton Honey, and I feel like my heart got a little bit broken by that one. It, <laughs> You know, we saw the pictures and they were so beautiful. And then ours always get these little gnarly centers where the, the petals just sort of twist in on themselves. So I don't know about those. Those, I still like them, but only if they're pretty. I think, I wonder sometimes if we, if there isn't an insect that does that. It might know there's an insect that can make them all gnarly or there's a disease or something. Okay, well we need to look I, into that. I know, I need to. Another dahlia that fits into our peachy tone palette is Cornell Bronze. Mm -hmm. This one goes a little more to the rust end of it, I would say. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of has different colors throughout the season, mm -hmm. but beautiful in fall bouquets. Mm -hmm. Love it so much. It's sort of a muted mm -hmm. color, and I think when you have all the same tones in a bouquet, it's not as interesting as if you have something that's a little more mm -hmm. muted, a little dusty, mm -hmm. a little, maybe a little muddy, like they say. Mm -hmm. We grew Rose Toscana last year for the first time. I had wanted to grow it for a couple of years and we just didn't really have the room. It, it's small enough, you could, we could almost use it as a little twinkle flower. Mm -hmm. And so it could float up above it, a bouquet or even just add a little bit of texture in a smaller bouquet. Mm -hmm. So to summarize, when you go to plan what dahlias to grow for floral design work, you wanna figure out a few color palettes to grow um, and then get different shades and tones within that palette. And then you also want to make sure that you get different sizes and shapes um, within those colors. And that takes a little bit to learn kind of what you like to work with. So don't take heart. If you have a bunch of duds this year, we did too. We've grown a lot of dead dahlias. Also, it's good to grow plenty of ball values because those can be used in so many different ways. And they're a lot easier to use in bouquets and arrangements and things. If you have a lot of those and then a few fun other like varieties. just if you only need a few dinner plates in, in our experience because one of those is all you need in a bouquet really if you're looking for any of the dahlia tubers that we talked about today to add to your garden this year we may have a few for sale after we divide ours in the spring um, and if you are interested in that i would say hop onto our email list we're not making too many promises because we always lose a couple in storage and we are trying to build our own stock this year but if we have any left we'll make them available Thanks for watching today, and if you have any favorite values that we should know about, let us know in the comments.